I'm Lorna Simcox. I'm with the Friends of Israel Gospel Ministry, and I'm here today with a very special guest. He's a close personal friend, and he's been a very great influence in my life. You could say he's the elder statesman for the Friends of Israel. He is the former executive director. He's former editor-in-chief of Israel My Glory magazine, and he is the man God used to found and host our radio broadcast. Elwood is the author of about 20 books, including the award-winning book Tzvi, The Miraculous Story of Triumph Over the Holocaust. I've been Elwood's editor for about 25 years now, and when he first brought me into his office, he told me about a very special book that he wanted to write, one that was very dear to his heart, and it only took him 25 years to get around to the project, and the name of that book is Almost There. We're here to talk about your newest book, Almost There. Yes. Why is this book so special to you? That book was written as a consequence of the years I spent in a little place in rural Virginia after my university training. Where did the title come from? Almost There. It's just that's a very practical title. In order to get to Good View, you had to go around the winding, there were two roads in. You wind around, you wind around, you wind around, you wind around. And the pastor who gave us directions, a man named Elbert Yates in Roanoke, Virginia, gave us directions to Good View. He said, you turn on this road to Chambersburg and you go, it was like 18 miles back there. Winding road, I don't know how far it would be. But he said this, he said, just, I'm going to tell you this, I'm gonna tell you once, that you, you will wind around and wind around until you are sure that you're lost. And then he said, you're almost there. And around the next bend, there was little good view laid out before us. Here was the store and the station house and the canning factory. They canned tomatoes. They raised tomatoes, they canned tomatoes. And uh, that was it. There it was, yeah. but when you when you when you were sure you're lost, you're almost there. And that phrase has st stuck with me for the whole of my pastoral life. Uh, talk a little bit about how you didn't know how you would get by on the salary that they were paying you, and how the Lord took care of that. Oh, yes, that's, that's an interesting story. Jimmy Jones, uh, who was really a guiding light in those days to me, uh, came to me and said, uh, we just voted to call you as our pastor. The one day, I preached in the morning, preached at night, they looked, closed the door, got their meeting, this whole church, had a meeting, and, and they said, we've called you to preach. Come back with us in this little room. We'll discuss things. We discussed. So Jimmy Jones said it wouldn't be fair to you to call you to preach until I showed you where you have to live. We went into this house. It was right by the road where the dust boiled in every time a car came by. And I looked, and he said, this is the kitchen. We looked, there was no faucet for the water to come in. There was no sink with a drain. All this stuff. She had to, she had to water 
from the well of a spring down at the bottom of the hill and carry buckets of water up to the kitchen that had no faucet, that had no drain. You throw it out the window. And, and, and it was so foreign to her that uh, it, uh, it was, Jimmy said, don't be ashamed if you, if you say you don't want to come here because we've had guys that we've called and when they saw this house, they laughed and left and nobody ever saw them again. But we were so eager to be in ministry that uh, we said, okay. We had a long discussion about how we could survive on a salary that was certainly not a beginning wage, uh, how we could get by, and she said, we can't get by, we can't. And uh, she was always very, so very practical. And then we went out on the porch of the parsonage, so-called, as we said, it was a joke, really. But we went out, and on the porch was filled with bags of groceries, produce, uh, when a hog, a hog shall kill, kill a guy to Manhattan, they would fill our, our, they put a freezer on the back porch. And they filled that freezer with all kinds of meat, right to the brim. And so what we couldn't get in remuneration, we got because they were giving themselves. And I learned, a, I really learned a, a, a big lesson, huge lesson from the conduct of these simple people was that these were the people who are going to make you as a preacher. What do you hope that people who read this book take away from it? <sighs> stories. I just decided to write about people and stories. And, and I'm amazed, actually, at how universally that book, everywhere they write, they publish it or sell it, they will give it five stars, just five stars. And uh, I think about that, and the reason it was five stars, I think, that they give it was because there's never been anything like it in, this, in a sense. They just tell stories. I've had several pastors call me to tell me they think everyone going into the ministry should read this book. You learn theology in seminary. You learn pastoring in places like Goodview, where it's you're made as a preacher by the people who minister to you. They have no idea they're doing this, but they leave, they leave some, of, some of their lives in you, and it's a heart matter.